Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch, a distinct Japanese theme running through all three videos this week. Indeed, we have looked at one of each from the holy trinity of Japanese watch brands. On Wednesday, it was the $1,000 Casio. Yesterday, it was a double Seiko unboxing. And today, it's a Citizen. Sorry, Orient. Better luck next week. If you didn't watch Wednesday's video about the $1,000 Casio, you really should. I'll leave a link up there in the top corner of the screen. Kind of Casio showing off a whole range of tech, super light, titanium, Bluetooth, solar, sapphire, etc., etc. But it was $1,000. I thought it was fitting, therefore, to review this Citizen this weekend because I reckon this Citizen has about 66% of the technology of the Casio for about 33% of the price. Does that mean it's twice as good? Now you saw the pop-up, I'm sure. This video is sponsored by Joma Shop. They sent me this watch for free. I do not have to send it back. All they ever ask is that if you are keen on this or anything else, I refer you to their website and I will do with a link in the description of the video. This one priced currently at the fantastically round sum of $313.99. The bean counters must have had a field day with that one. And like I said, I think you get plenty for your $300 and change today with this one. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. All right, let's get into it. Then, do you know what? I think this is the first full review of this particular model on YouTube. There's a few snippets here and there, but nobody has done a full video on it, which is a surprise because it's not a particularly new model. I don't think this one's been out for a couple of years so far, and I think it's pretty good. I've definitely been getting into Citizen Eco Drives this year. I see the value in the movement for a start. And I think for $300, if you're prepared to step to one side from the usual kind of Seiko automatic dive watch fare, you do get a lot for your money with one of these. It's actually made in Japan for a start. Catchy model number CA0349-51L, and that 495 USD is the RRP. So yeah, the Joma Shop price, nearly 40% off that. Basic stats there, including a five-year limited warranty. Now, I normally mention it in the intro, but I didn't on this occasion. Five-year limited warranty. If you're buying it from Citizen, they cover the warranty. If you're buying it from Joma Shop, Joma Shop cover the warranty. You still get five years, but you're sending it back to Joma in the case of a warranty issue. And two spare links for this one. So eight-inch wrists are possible, but I wouldn't go too much more beyond that. So there it is. Now, I will bring in the $1,000 Casio that I referenced in the intro. A bit later on, it's certainly not a comparison. It's not a kind of head-to-head -to -head today, but I will bring it in a bit later just to show you the obvious differences between the two watches. But yeah, I don't think you're being ripped off here for a third of the money. I still think you're getting plenty. So it's an eco drive, meaning solar charge, up to seven months charge off a, a full battery, 100 meters of water resistance from a push-pull crown, and this is full titanium. I believe there's a coating on the titanium as well. I've had this one for a couple of months now, I've been wearing it on and off, and haven't managed to scratch the clasp, which is always the first place that gets scratched, so that bodes well. And unlike the Casio, which was 40 mil, this is a full size watch, 43 millimeters in diameter, but only 11.6 mil thick, so nice and slim because it is a quartz movement. 49 mil lug to lug, 22 millimeter lug width, tapering back down to 18, back up to 20 at the clasp, sized up for me, seven inch wrist, so it's a full size chronograph, 97 grams. That is the advantage of titanium, clearly. Flat sapphire crystal, however, I don't think there's any, there we go. I don't think there's any anti-reflective undercoating under that crystal, unfortunately. Case finish is pretty simple, all brushed on the head of the watch. The bezel, as you can see there though, is high polished titanium. Unsigned crown, which is a little bit disappointing, and a pair of high polished pushers there. You do get a little bit of high polish on the bracelet though. Bracelet, these are just single links and it is push pins, but the bracelet is super light and super comfortable. Titanium though, titanium clasps tend to be this press style unless you're spending big bucks, you generally get a press clasp and yeah, that is on the moans and niggles, only two micro adjusts, so you've only got one either side. Generally a little bit cheap feeling on the clasp, I'm afraid. Screw on titanium case back with the EcoDrive logo kind of front and center right in the middle there. That is very lightly etched on, I believe, as opposed to printed on, so it's gonna stay there, it's gonna last the course. Usual spec sheet around the outer edges, including 
including the 100 meters of water resistance. It is a B612 Eco Drive movement that has a kind of base accuracy of plus or minus 15 seconds per month. I'm slightly disappointed that it doesn't say do not open, not user serviceable. I quite like that when the easy eco drive movements tell you, look, don't mess around with me. I'll tick for decades happily. Just leave me alone to do my job in peace. So what does a Citizen Eco Drive B612 movement actually do then? Well, Hour hand, minute hand, and chrono hand. I love the fact that the chrono hand and 1224 hour indicator there are baby blue. Nice use of blue here overall. Date complication at the three, and it's a quick set date, so it will flick over immediately on midnight. Small second. A lot of people object to quartz. I think their objections are lessened with small second indicators down there at the six o'clock. That is a 1224, and it is a 60 minute chrono timer. One push to start, one push to stop, and one push to slow low reset. Now the chrono in operation ticks five times per second so it is capable of measuring down to one fifth of a second and the markers around the outer edge of the dial are in fifth of a second increments. You've also got that tachymeter scale also. Let's get some macro of this one outside and have a look at it in more detail then. Do you know what? Considering how much is actually going on on this dial with the tri-compacts layout, the date complication, and all of those markings, I think they've got this one just about spot on, and I think their use of color here has really complemented the watch. I do like the multiple shades of blue, and I do like the fact that those two main registers at the 12 and the six are ringed in white. I think that really adds a little bit of definition. So the indices around the edge are applied at the hour markers, but the logo there is just printed on Citizen Eco Drive Titanium offset to the right either side of the date complication at the three o'clock. Kind of simple printed border around that day in the baby blue, picking out the baby blue on the chrono hand and also the 1224 hour indicator over there at the nine o'clock. And if we look across this watch at the angle, only 11.6 mil thick as mentioned, but very, very nice multiple depth layers. Angled tachymeter, the outer minute marker also has a beveled edge pointing into the flat center section. The two registers at the 12 and the six are also raised a little bit and there's a bevel to the hour and the minute hands as well. And that's it, super close up, no dust, no imperfections. All printing is nice and crisply done here as well. The hands look good. And the three small hands at the sub registers are all very neatly applied as well. Overall, the standard fit and finish on this one is great for 300 bucks. That's it on wrist, seven inch wrist as mentioned, kind of average size. The lack of anti-reflective coating doesn't do it any favors. As you can see there, it looks pretty dull from some angles, but yeah, you can see the depth, you can see the texture, and you can see how all of those different blues play off against each other from other angles. Now, 49 lug to lug on this one, you think that's pretty large, but those down turning mid links of the end links there really help and yeah 97 grams you can get away with a much bigger watch than you normally would if it's made of titanium Overhead legibility is still pretty good. It's a busy dial as discussed, there's a lot going on, but again, the use of color helps and silver hands against that dark blue dial main color also help give this one a little bit of clarity, a little bit of legibility even from on high. But outside, once again, the Achilles heel, the lack of anti-reflective undercoating rears its ugly head. There's quite a lot of kind of bounce back and it's a flat sapphire crystal, which doesn't help. But if you catch it from the right angle, again, there's all those blues and the white playing off against each other nicely. On wrist, very, very comfortable, this one. You can see I've got it loose on wrist, though it is flopping around a little bit. That's because there aren't enough micro adjusts here. But 97 grams mean you can wear a bigger watch looser than you would ordinarily do if it was pushing up towards 200 rather than scraping in underneath 100 grams. So a well-priced, full-sized, set-and-forget, grab-and-go chronograph with a great warranty then, all for $313.99. But there are some moans and niggles. I'm sure you could pretty much write this moans and niggles list to this point in the review yourselves, the lack of anti-reflective undercoating in the flat sapphire crystal, not a great combination. And that's my biggest bugbear with this one. Only one micro adjust hole means I've been wearing it looser than I would have liked to. And unfortunately, you can't swap this out for an 18 mil standard clasp because it's recessed. Believe me, I have tried. 
you know, that would give me issues anyway, putting a stainless steel bracelet clasp on and a titanium bracelet. But yeah, I would have done it if I could, but I can't. So unfortunately, I didn't. The last thing I haven't shown you to this point, though, is the loom. And that usually means it's not that great. And yeah, it's not that great. It's got that standard Citizen Pale blue color like BGW9. And it looks reasonable when the lights go out. But when I turn the speed up, the indices on this one it simply don't last long enough. The hands are okay, but the indexes are a bit of a disappointment. And there we are then, a brief side-by-side -side comparison then between the $300 Citizen and the 3X Casio Oceanus. Look at the glass, look at the difference in the glass. That glass on the Casio is absolutely phenomenal. It is just amazing the difference that a good piece of glass makes and the whole level of finishing on the titanium, yeah. Sometimes I put two watches side by side and you can't see where the money has gone with the expensive one. That old law of diminishing returns kicks in. I think here you certainly can see where your money goes if you have the money and if you are prepared to spend more money on the Casio over the Citizen. But I still think this one has a fair amount to offer for that $313.99 price tag. I'm really warming to Citizen as a brand this year and I'm really warming to EcoDrive Solar Quartz technology as a concept this year as well. I think everyone should have at least one of these watches in their collection because at least that way you're guaranteed to have one watch that's always set at the right time. So there you have it, we're almost done. Only one thing remains and that's for you to pick your next video. If you fancy checking out another Citizen GMT, you can do so by clicking here. If you fancy checking out the legendary Blue Angels Chrono, you can do by clicking here. Thanks for watching, see you all soon.